Do you really need a dropper? Some of you are probably shouting at the screen. Of course you do. But do you, do you really? Well, today we're gonna find out. Oh my gosh. First up then, a quick history lessons. Now, droppers became mainstream about 20 years ago or so. And their progression since then has been nothing short of meteoric. However, you can actually trace the dropper post back to sort of the early 80s with something called the height right. This was a fairly crude first version with an externally attached spring, but it did allow riders back in the day to adjust their saddle height whilst on the go. From there, things progressed onto externally routed cable actuated droppers, either with a lever at the bar or even under the saddle sometimes. And then we moved on even further. Hydraulic posts came in. And now we're looking at posts which don't even have a cable. They're controlled wirelessly via Bluetooth. Progression really is insane. Having said that though, is there a place in the world for bikes not equipped with a dropper? Or are you crazy for even suggesting such a thing? So we're gonna need an experiment then to see if you do truly need a dropper post. And I think I've come up with the perfect way. I found a piece of track here at the Forest of Dean that we're gonna do four runs on. I've got two very different bicycles and we'll do a run each, one with a solid, one with a dropper post on it and compare the times to see just how much of a difference there is between the bikes themselves with two different posts, but also compare the bikes as well and can one get close to the other? Let's have a look at the bikes then. And first up is Ron Burgundy, my XC race weapon, 120 mil travel, full suspension mountain bike. Now I'm not adverse to running a solid seat post on this bike anyway. So will that sort of play to its advantages, shall we say, that familiarity of knowing what it's like or sticking a dropper post on make a huge difference? Hmm. On the other end of the spectrum then is Goldmember, my enduro bike, 160, 170 mil of travel. And a bike like this pretty much comes with a dropper as standard. So will taking the dropper off of it and putting a solid seat post on negate all of its sort of capabilities, if you like? Will that longer travel and slack head angle and things like that, all its geometry, go out the window and a cross country bike with a dropper actually get close to its time? The piece of trail in question then, well, it's not really about the ups here because we all know you'd have your seat as high as it could possibly go for climbing anyway. So we're talking about the downs and I've got a spicy little number here at the Forest Dean called Corkscrew. Strewn with the rocks, roots, drops and everything else in between. And it's a little bit greasy today because it's been raining. It should be the perfect test. So first up, XC bike, solid seat post, dropping in in three, two, one, go. See you in a mo. Oh dear Lord. Right, the things with a solid seat post. Line choice is crucial, because you ain't moving around on the bike as easy. Does mean, oh, you've got a, uh oh, I know this bit sketchy. Oh, GoPro even hitting the bars there. Yeah, you just, you can kind of get through all of this. Oh, but you just cannot move around on the bike quite as easy. I mean, you can still do your drops there. <laughs> okay, so that's the run on the XC bike with a solid seat post done and dusted. Let's spin her back up to the top, swap out the seat post and see what the difference in times is. Run number two, XC bike. Drop a post, thank the Lord. I'll see you in the mo. Oh my God, it's way better already. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. oh man, drop a post. Could well be the way. Might have been kidding myself before thinking it was all right. Oh, that must have been. Right. Oh. oh my lord. Well, that felt considerably faster. I see what, let's take a look at the times over a cheeky cuppa. Well, it turns out the calf was actually pretty flat out, so I've snuck off to a quiet spot in the woods to have a little look at the times. Now, as we'd expect, the XC bike with a dropper was much faster. To be clear, without a dropper post on this piece of trail, it's quite a short bit of trail, mind, it was 48 seconds. 
with a dropper post a whole 10 seconds faster a 38 and that is just basically because an xc bike is pretty unforgiving so just being able to move around get the saddle out of the way i think we all knew it it was going to make a huge difference now having said that i'm going to contradict myself a little bit here because i would still run my xc bike that specific type of bike without a dropper post for the weight saving and depending upon the style of course now this is real technical what we're coming down here so actually that is where it did come into its own hugely. However, if an XC race was much smoother, a lot peddlier, a lot flatter, or if it was really hilly, you know, one extreme or the other, and you actually really wanted to save weight, I would get rid of the dropper. Having said that though, it's time to get the enduro bike out. Here we are then back at the top of our piece of trail and I've already tried to press the dropper button three times to no avail whatsoever because the solid seat post is on. So we are gonna drop in first run see what this is like i am apprehensive because i'm probably going to go and try to be a bit quick down it and realize i've got a seat post up my butt but that's the experiment so i'll see you at the bottom in three two one toodles oh jeez, geez oh, oh i did not like this very much at all it's sort of a weird in-between feeling of, of nice oh, nice travel so it's a bit faster and comfortable, but because you still can't properly move around, I'd throw the bike about. Still so gritty, horrendous. Like limiting, if you like. Oh my god! Well, that was a little bit spicy, wasn't it? Just the way I don't like my food. On to run two with a dropper. Right, the time has come. I'm excited. It's run number two. The dropper is dropped. Is it going to be needed though? Is it going to be faster? I should blow my note so. See you in a moment. Oh, really? Absolutely hot off of that. That felt fast. But just how fast? Well, let's head back to the bottom to look at some times. I've come back to the woods and people, the times are in, the numbers have been crunched and there's something pretty interesting going on here. So remember our XE times a moment. The XE bike without a dropper post was 48 seconds and with was 38 seconds. The enduro bike with no dropper post on it, so slammed all the way up there, real nice and high, pretty uncomfortable and a wild ride was only one second faster than an XC bike with a dropper post. Just going to show that actually the type of bike can play a huge role here as to what you're doing and the speeds that you can go. I was surprised it was pretty close. And do you know what though? The difference is actually, even without a dropper post, this bike felt much more stable, much more in control. The XC bike was flipping all over the show, but the Enduro bike in its normal setup, it's normal guys, if you like, it smashed it. I got down there in 29 seconds. It was humongously quicker than everything else and it felt it. You know, these bikes are designed to have a dropper, the geometry, the way they work, the way they feel, the way they handle. So the question I asked at the start of the video, do you need a dropper? Yeah, yeah, you kind of do. <laughs> but that's a conclusion. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Are you a dropper post user or are you a solid seat smasher? I'd like to know. Let me know. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, see you later.